you know, deliver very broad level concepts and, you know, push the training into you. So, I think that's has been a trend. But however, at the other end, we have also recognized the fact that for some of these inspirational lectures, which actually embed things into you which you never forget because of the personality that teaches you, is what prompted us also to look at now a synchronous delivery model. So today we partner with premium institutes like uh, IIMs for the management education, where actually the same professors teach, but we are kind of use technology to break that barrier. That if so many people cannot be on campus, let them teach in the evening, and people who are working professionals or even students who are finishing their uh, schooling or college and then stepping into the industry, they actually get the experience of these inspirational gurus and get it over technology, sitting on a PC with their personalized headphones and interactivity on two ways. So I think uh, one of the things that uh, I think from our experience is that the, the similar age group or the peer learning definition for certain kind of subjects makes tremendous sense for people to absorb that learning in a much better manner. Because the barrier of a teacher to a student somehow is broken. People feel in the same peer group and therefore they are able to do things much better. And uh, one of the th methodologies we follow is also something we acquired from a US based company called Cognitive Arts, the experts in instructional design. And they call it the critical mistakes analysis technique. So the more mistakes you make while learning, and if there is somebody who can just analyze the mistakes and play it back to you, saying this is where your mistake was and if you were to do this right, next time you would be better and keep getting better and better and better till you become the expert. I think we use that a lot in our instructional design strategies so that students are prompted to make mistakes by design the right book is such that you make mistakes. And because you absorb more IT education in a way if you make mistakes. I think one of the roles uh, which comes out very clearly is if there is the guide be a mental kind of a situation rather than the absolute lecturer teacher which helps people absorb much better and become better professionals in life because that's the peer group they get when they get into the working environment. Thank you, Pankaj. I think Pankaj, uh, on both occasions, mentioned a uh, number of new ways to teach and new ways to learn. And uh, I hope we have absorbed a few of those and can use, uh, can use those. Now, while a lot of them are about technology and techniques, uh, I'd like to talk about the peer learning or the near peer learning and which is extremely effective. Now, um, you can think of, for example, you know, you learn so much in the classroom, but you also learn from peers. And you also learn from seniors. Uh, you know, your professor may tell you that go and do this course or uh, go and join this job. But your one year senior guy, you know, you tend to listen more to him. And that's an important, powerful thing. And now that guy says, you know, this course you do, you will get an A grade. Doesn't matter. So you go and do that course. So uh, the uh, influence of uh, the immediate peers or immediate peers is extremely uh, is extremely important, and that is something maybe the new teaching can uh, can really uh, help. The, the I can also relate to the. Uh, uh, faculty being young and how that can help and Professor Sadagopan will remember because when you were uh, teaching at IIT Kanpur I was a student there and uh, one of the faculty who inspired me most was Professor Barua who was just a few years older than us uh, and uh, so so that really makes a difference. Now um, we, uh, we have just half an hour left before we throw open uh, for questions, there are just two more topics I'd like to uh, like this panel to debate. Uh, you know, we, we are talking of uh, industry relevant training. Now, the industry by and large needs software engineers. Now, do we teach software engineering? And uh, if we don't, first is in, if we do, it's fine. But if we don't, should that be taught? Now, software engineering could mean, you know, here you could learn writing 500 lines of fresh code, your own code. Industry may want you to tweak around 50,000 lines of code and the two are different kinds of challenges. Uh, so should such things be taught or to test 50,000 lines of code uh, written by somebody else and you have not much clue about that beyond some documentation that may be shaky. Okay, so should such things be taught? Uh, to be a software engineer also requires a whole lot of soft skills and here I don't just mean English. 
uh, you, you have to interact with team members, with peers, you have to understand from the customer. Customer tells you something, but customer needs something else. Now, and these are soft skills. Now, should such things also be taught because they are part of uh, software engineering? So, uh, so basically, it emanates uh, from uh, two things. So one is in terms of clearly we need to uh, uh, differentiate and segment what the industry actually wants. So one is uh, is high end skills, which is typically product engineering, where people are creating something new. Uh, they are solving certain problems, creating something new. Other is uh, that's very few in number. Uh, if you typically look, 20% of the industry consumption would be in that area. But balance, 80% of the consumption is typically in uh, testing, in, in infrastructure management, <coughs> developing, uh, checking codes, or uh, developing codes which are used, uh, using templates and things like that, which is, which is very process-oriented, repetitive task, and somebody has to gain proficiency in that. And coupled with the fact that this, this person has to be enrolled with these skills, coupled with the fact that he has to mold away from his uh, student uh, culture into a corporate culture. And that's where it brings to me an important point is that in typically all of us, including myself and my kids, are currently going through an education system which is very individualistic oriented. It all starts with him or, or her and stops with that. And uh, so we are, uh, we, uh, from a system perspective, it doesn't, uh, I mean, uh, get people to work in a team, collaborate. The project works, which is typically given in some of these schools, has not much emphasis. I mean, it's like a also a random thing. There's not much, uh, it's a good to have thing than a must have uh, kind of a stop, which sort of first was teamwork. From, and you go on to engineering throughout in that system where it's very individualistic oriented and you're, it all starts and stops with you. And then you're thrown into an environment, uh, it's a corporate culture, which is all about teaming. It's all about getting things done. It's all about uh, networking with people. It's all about uh, uh, collaborating. It's all about sharing your problems and asking for help. And then uh, this person uh, just is not able to react and then the industry comes back and says the soft skills are poor. So what they're essentially saying is that they're not able to maneuver in a manner in which they're not able to collaborate, not able to work on a project uh, and get things done and, and, and share loads. So that's something which we need to see uh, how will we be able to bring that into it. Because in an, any service economy, because the fact that the service economy in which as, as per our India GDP is growing, in a service economy all these soft skills, this cultural things, teaming, project management becomes very, very critical and something was thrown in from an, our current academic setup to a corporate culture, especially in the service uh, side, needs to get over that orientation. It has to not start in college, it probably has to start in schools and then in college it has to really get amplified because he should almost feel like he's working in a service sector where he's collaborating and working in projects. Yeah, we do have pro uh, final semester projects and seven semester projects and things like that, but it, it is, like I said, it is, it's a good to have thing, it's not a must have thing and that's something which we need to really see uh, that. And also we need to segment our, our curriculum, our, our knowledge sharing methodology based on what, what is required uh, in the industry in the sense that the industry is looking for 20% of the people who are, uh, who are creating uh, knowledge or creating wealth or creating that leading edge stuff. But actually 80% of the workforce is, uh, is required to do repetitive tasks in a process oriented way. So, so we need to say that okay, so for a student, he needs to be very clear where he needs to go or he, 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 he can go either way. And there should be a good rewards mechanism uh, for him to have chosen each other way. Uh, so it should not be that, okay, there is a class system, no, no, you don't belong there, you do belong there because of which uh, you're, not, you're not important, you're not needed. But you need to work and there's a lot of cultural social issues attached to it and I think it's a, it's a much deeper problem than it, what, uh, what it seems. Uh, definitely, the, some of the some of the some of the points which Karthik had mentioned, even Kajan, you mentioned as you opened the question, are very really relevant. There is even a much more fundamental difference, the change that is happening when some somebody transitions from academic world to a corporate world. And I'll give this, I'll explain this by another example. It's called the cat versus the monkey. 